Hey there, we are so grateful that you are joining us and a part of our church today and that you're jumping in to watch this message. Hey, I'm Jay, one of the pastors here at Covenant Church, and I'm so grateful that you would be a part of our church family wherever you are and wherever ever you're watching from. Maybe today is your first time watching our online or experiencing Covenant Church. You're new and just checking things out. We get that. And, and we're glad that you're here to do that. Would you do us a huge favor? We would love to get connected with you. So text the word NEW to 252-304-0222. We have a gift for you and one of our team members would love to follow up with you. This is just our way of saying thanks for being here. Well, let's jump right into this week's teaching time. Again, thanks for being here and have a great day. Listen, we're gonna start a two-part sermon series. That means this week and next week, we're going to look at a section of Scripture which I think is one of the most practical um, pieces of uh, the Bible that you can possibly read. We're going to look at what Jesus said about worry. And so I, I thought I'd, I'd start today with a question from Jesus. This, this question comes straight from the lips of Jesus. So think about how you would answer this. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Any takers? <laughs> All right, how about the inverse to this? Can any of you... By worrying, ha have any of you by worrying subtracted time from your life? All right, that one resonates, doesn't it? Yeah, I've spent a lot of time worrying. And in fact, there's lots to worry about in this world, whether it's uh, uh, COVID or the economy, the job market, the housing market, um, what's happening with our children's education. I mean, whatever it is, that is your particular thing, uh, it would be easy to worry about it. The list could go on and on. But if you think about Jesus' question, I mean, he says, if worry doesn't add any value to your life, it doesn't add any time to your life, and it doesn't make anything better, why would you do it? And yet we all do it. We all do it. I mean, worry is almost completely a universal thing. So I'm really glad that Jesus decided to address this subject head on in Matthew chapter 6. So this weekend and next weekend, we're going to cover this amazing section on worry in Matthew chapter 6. So if you've got your Bibles, you might turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. You can follow along on your insert. You can uh, look on the screens if you're uh, in the room. Depending on your version of Scripture. Now, I, I use an NIV. So my NIV, when you open it up, it actually has a heading that, that talks about worry. It just says worry. Um, and that, that starts with verse 25. So in many of our Bibles, you would say, well, that's where Jesus begins to talk about worry. And that would not be true. That's where he gets into the meat of talking about worry. But he actually starts talking about the subject a few verses back. And he gives the true reason for worry. This is important for us. The true reason that people worry. I mean, he, he says this in verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. The key word here is devoted. The word devoted means to give a majority of, of one's time and energy to something. It's a, it's a priority word, in fact. And what Jesus says here is, you cannot have two number one priorities in your life. 
they're in competition with each other. You can't, you can't have two number ones. There's always got to be something that is the most important thing. So he says, you can't be devoted to God and devoted to something else at the same time. And so this is the spiritual principle that will take us through really both weeks, but especially as we're talking the first part of Matthew chapter 6 today. And it's this. If there is something that is that you are more devoted to than God, that's what we'll tend to worry about. If there's something uh, that we are more devoted to than God, something that wins out, is number one over God in our life, that thing is the thing that we tend to to worry about. Now, having said that, the rest of that verse becomes pretty interesting because Jesus then goes right to the heart of what most people worry about more than anything else. Guess what it is? <laughs> he says, you cannot serve both God and money. So you can't be devoted to God sold out, devoted to God, and your bank account at the same time, or your, your property at the same time, or your retirement funds at the same time, or your stuff. You cannot be devoted to the one. He says money, those things will compete against God for number one in your life. And I know some might be going, ah, this is a... This is a sermon about money. Well, for some of you, it is. It is a sermon about money because that's what you're most devoted to. Or maybe it's a sermon about your health because that's the thing you're most devoted to. Or maybe it's a sermon about your whatever, right? Whatever it is that you're most devoted to, your, your family, your safety, your relationships, human relationships with, with uh, your friends or your romantic relationships, whatever it is that you're most devoted to, that's the thing that you'll tend to worry about. And Jesus says, you can't put anything above your relationship with God. And when you do, that's when you tend to worry. Now, that brings us to the meat of the worry section, which begins with verse 25, and I'm going to read it, but before I do, you'll notice that verse 25 has a therefore, starts with therefore, which means it is connected to the section that we just read. Now, when I was in seminary, this is what we were taught. They said, when, when you're reading the Bible and you come to the word therefore, you need to look back and see what the therefore was there for. So there's always something back when you read the therefore. So what, was, what, we, what did we just read? Anything you're devoted to more than God, you're going to worry about. So Jesus then says this in verse 25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, uh, or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. And I think what Jesus is saying here when he says, do not worry about your life is do not worry about anything in your life. Do not worry about anything. Now, the two things that he does mention are probably the two things that his audience in Matthew 6 were most concerned about, food and clothes. Now, why would that be? Well, in Jesus' day, this probably would have been true. If, if you didn't work that day, you didn't eat that day. I mean, that's how, that's how fragile people's economy was. And so everybody was always worried about, do we have, will we have food for our family? And then, same thing with clothes. Most people owned one set of clothes, not one closet 
full of clothes, like most of us, right? One set of clothes. And so there was always, well, what happens if my, my pair of pants gets ripped or if my, you know, my elbows start to wear out on my clothes? What, what will happen? Um, I, I will need clothes to wear. And so he says here, look, I don't want you to worry about food. <clears throat> I don't want you to worry about clothes. I don't want you to worry about anything at all. Don't worry about your life at all, anything in your life. Now, if Jesus were speaking to us, I mean, how would that sound to us? Because uh, there are some of us who are already thinking about food. You're thinking about, well, what can I eat when I leave here? All right. Uh, some of you are thinking about clothes. You know, do I need to go wash clothes so I have something to wear in the morning? But we're not really worried about those things. Well, a modern day equivalent to an audience like us might be this. Uh, don't worry about anything in your life. Don't worry about your job or your 401k or your health or your, you know, whether you can afford a house or whether you're going to get married or whether your children are going to turn out well or whether they're going to get in a certain school. He says, look, I don't want you to be devoted to anything so much so that you have to worry about it. All right? So, you know, is Jesus saying, hey, the stuff in your life is not that important? Well, that's not what he's saying at all. He's saying it's very important. The things that you are concerned about in your life, they are of extreme importance to you. And you're right. The, we, who knows what the future is going to hold? There's plenty of uncertainty around all of those things. But he says, but you don't need to spend time worrying over any of them. Because he says, isn't life more than food? Isn't life more than clothes? You know, my, isn't life more than your children's grades? Isn't life more than where you live? Or how you look? Or how much you weigh? Or whether your hair is receding? I mean, isn't, whatever it is, right? Isn't life more than those things? I want you to get to the place where you don't have to worry about anything. Now, that's impossible, isn't it? No one can get to that place where you don't worry about stuff. But Jesus says, listen, I want you to get to the place where you don't worry about anything. And so, he asks three questions. And these are great questions to help us get to the place where we put worry on the shelf. So these are the three questions I want us to look at today. All right? The first question that Jesus asks is this. He says, have you considered the birds? Have you considered the birds? Verse 26, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? I mean, again, he says, listen, uh, the birds have plenty to eat. And um, they don't plant crops. They don't make plans. They don't have pantries. They don't buy freezers. They, I mean, they don't have any way to store any food. And yet, have you noticed they eat every day? Have you noticed it? They eat every single day of their lives. He says, listen, your heavenly father takes care of the birds. He loves the birds. He loves the birds. Now, what Jesus is saying here is no slap on birds, okay? Birds are great. Birds are beautiful. They are created 
by God. They are, you know, majestic, winged, wonderful creatures. Uh, yet, when you read the, the account of creation in Genesis chapter 1, the birds come way before people. The birds happen on day five along with the fish and the other animals. But on day six, the Bible says something special happened. God made people who were in his own image. They were different than the animals and the fish and the birds. They were made in the image of God. They are special. They are different. And so what Jesus is saying here, clearly you are more loved by God than the birds. And he really loves the birds. So you are more loved than the birds in God's eyes. You're more special. And, and think about this. When, when God sent a Savior to the world, he sent not a bird. He sent a person. He sent a human being, someone in his image, in the person of Jesus Christ, who came in order that we might have our sins forgiven and be redeemed and be brought into a relationship with God. So go back to the question. He says, listen, when you're worried about things, just look around at the birds. And instead of asking, you know, you need to ask yourself again, listen, instead of worrying, I need to figure out, is God, does God take care of them? Well, if he does, then he certainly can take care of me. He can take care of me. He loves me. Now, um, I'm someone that needs tools. I need, I need tools to help me not worry. How about you? Like if I just had a tool in my belt that I could pull out, uh, it would help me. And so I, I've created a few memory tools today. Okay? Uh, here's the first one. All right, because when you start to worry, you've got to catch yourself you got to go, oh, there I go again. Okay? Don't you know when you start worrying? There I am again. I'm worrying again. So here's the first tool. There I go again. I'm worrying again. Remember, I believe that God loves me more than a bird. All right? So sometimes I even have to do this. Remember, God loves me. More than a bird. It, say it. God loves me more than a bird. Because listen, this is great. Every time you see a bird, you can go, God loves me more than that bird. And God loves that bird. God loves that bird. And God loves that bird. And God loves this bird. <laughs> right? He loves me more than a bird. Okay? That just says... That I don't have to be worried. The birds aren't worried. I don't have to be worried. All right. Second question that Jesus asks. This is a great question too. He says, will your worrying accomplish anything? He's asking you and me directly. Will, will your worrying actually work? Will it accomplish anything at all? He says, again, verse 27, Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? There's that worrisome question again. You know, does it help? Well, listen, look back at 26. Look what he says. He says, the birds, they don't sow, they don't reap, and they don't gather. Meaning, you know, they don't, they don't plenty seeds in the ground, they don't, they don't pick crops, they don't put it in barns. And he said, in fact, can we just say, birds don't do anything. Birds really, they do hardly anything at all, except when they get hungry, they go looking for something to eat. And it says, God helps them find something to eat. So the question is, well, what about you? What about you? Well, you do plant and reap and gather. That's what people do. We're not birds. That's what people do. He said, so, uh, what should you do? What about you? 
Because see, I don't think this is Jesus saying, hey, you don't need to do anything. Just sit back, God will take care of you. You don't need to do anything. Because that's not what he's saying here. He's not saying, look, go ahead and quit work. Uh, stop saving for the future. Uh, stop filling out applications if you need a job. Stop helping your children with their homework. They'll get it or they won't. Right? He doesn't, he's not saying that. He's saying, uh, stop going out on dates trying to meet people. I mean, you'll either meet them or you won't. That's not what he's saying. Now, what, what he's saying here is, after you've done everything you can do, you know, to control your situation, then why would you spend any more time and energy or another hour of your life worrying about something you cannot control or change? The future. You, you say you can't control the future, so you do everything you can, and then when you've done everything you can, then you trust what God can. Right? So that's why he asked the question. He, he says, uh, so did it help to worry? Well, I felt better. But did it help? Did it really, did it do anything? Did it add any value at all? And the answer is, no, not really. Now, listen, here's why I think people worry. I think that people worry because they want to do something. So they feel like if I worry, I am really doing something. Like if I worry about someone, I'm caring about them. So it's good for me to be on the phone and say, hey, I was so worried about you. I'm going to worry until you get home on this rainy night. Okay? Like, is that going to help? Is that going to help anything? Um, I, I, I'm going to, I just want to do something. Or I, I want to make a difference. Well, worrying doesn't do anything for you. That's why Jesus just cuts right to the heart of the matter. And he says, stop worrying. It, it doesn't do any good. So here's memory tool number two. All right, you ready? All right, you know, the first one is, hey, the bird's not worrying. I don't need to worry. Well, here's the second one. When you start worrying, you go, oh, I'm worrying again, and this is what I'm doing, right? I need to remember, I'm just wasting valuable moments of my life by doing this. I mean, when you're worrying, if you were to stop, think about it, if you were to stop and say, I'm wasting my life. I'm wasting precious moments of my life here, then I'll tell you, that would change your worry. I mean, how many of you have been to a meeting at work, and then you came back and you said, I'll never get those moments back. I have, that, th that life was wasted right there. Or you went to, you know, a place for Thanksgiving, and you said, well, we had to do it, but, you know, those, were, <laughs> those hours were gone, right? Well, that's the same thing it is with worry. You go, I, I am not going to just keep taking the, the few hours that I have in my life and throwing them away at something that does no good at all. It won't do any good. I'm just wasting not just my time, but I'm wasting my life. That brings me to the third question. Jesus asked this. This is, this is a tough question right here. Why is it so hard for you to trust God? Why is it so hard for you to trust God. Verse 28, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the fire, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Now, you know, I was okay until he got to that last part. How about you? You of, oh, you of little faith. You see, that, that's us when we resort to 
taking matters into our own hands by worrying. Because truly, that's what you're doing. Is You are saying, God is not capable of taking care of me, so I better take care of me. I'm going to pull everything back into my own lap. Which makes worry a faith issue. That's why Jesus goes to faith here. Worry is a faith issue. See, it all goes back to that word devoted. If there is anything that I start worrying about, the, what I should know is that thing has worked its way into my number one priority. I actually now put that thing above God in my life. Oh, no, I don't. Well, then why do you worry about it? Well, it's because it has crept up and has become the thing that you are devoted. You are devoted to that thing. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying you're not a Christian. I'm not saying you don't love God. I'm not saying you're not a follower of Jesus. But listen, when you worry, that is basically a no-confidence vote for God. You're saying God couldn't handle it. It was too big for him. Therefore, I will take it into my own hands. I will, I will take it. And because I'm not God, when I start taking on things that don't belong to me, what happens is I start to fret and panic and worry about them because I, I truly can't handle them after all. Now, wouldn't it be better to get to the place where I could say, I could go out and say, look at that beautiful overpass. Look at those flowers planted by the state of North Carolina that are wildflowers. Are they beautiful or what? And they are weeds. They're just weeds. And look how beautiful they are. And if God can care for wildflowers like these, which are going to be, they're going to pop up today and they're going to go away tomorrow, I believe I can be confident, absolutely confident, to know that he can take care of whatever need I have from clothes to whatever. So listen, here's ministry tool, memory tool number three. All right, when you start to worry, you go, you stop your, I'm worrying again. I, I, I need to stop worrying and I need to start trusting. And when you start trusting, you start praying. I'm going to stop worrying, and I'm going to start praying. You know, those are the opposite, right? When you call on God to help, that's called prayer. When you call on you to work, to, to help, that's called worry. All right, I'm going to worry about this. Well, then carry on. It won't do any good. It's not going to help. But there is one who can help, wants to help, is able to help, and we need to call on him. We need to be people that are calling out in prayer. This is what we, Lord, this is what I need. I need your help. Because the truth is, I don't know if y'all thought about this, but there's not one thing in this world that you can control. There's not one thing in this world. You can't control the future. You don't know what's going to happen. And so you can worry about it, take it into your own hands. Or you can say, you know what? I know that God is capable of helping me. Because really, you know, there are only three things that are inevitable, right? Death, every one of us is going to die. Okay? Taxes, we're all going to pay them. Right? And God. God is, he's always been faithful. He will always be faithful. He's not going to stop. That's why Jesus says, look, if, if you knew my father like I know my father, you wouldn't worry. He's got it in his hands. Now, can I get personal with you? I mean, I'm not going to ask you what you're worried about because y you already know it. You already know the things that just cause you to stay up at night, lay awake at night, 
things that you are worried about? Well, the truth is, the why is, well, that, that thing has crept up into a priority that it does not deserve. Okay, you're devoted to that thing. That's why you're worried about it. Okay, but the place I want to get personal is I want to go to, back to those three questions. The root cause of your worry. Because th- this is where we need to do the work. The first one is, I worry when I feel like God doesn't love me. Like God doesn't, that God doesn't care about me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't think that I'm special. He doesn't think I'm of, of worth. And none of that is true about any of us. We know how much he loved us because he sent his one and only son to die for us to restore the image in which he created us that we might be children of God. You know, when you accept Jesus Christ, we start walking with Christ, something amazing happens. Uh, You become not just saved, you become a child of the living God, which is why I love what Jesus says here. Don't you know that your heavenly Father cares about the birds? You see, He's not just God out there somewhere. He is your heavenly Father, and you are His children, and He loves you. You know, faith in Christ does that for us. John said it in John chapter 1, Yet to all who did receive Him... To those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, meaning, you know, not not born from your parents, or of a human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. We've been born again, and now God takes responsibility for us, and he loves us. And the ones he loves don't need to worry. You know, the second, second question really is a good question for us, too, I think, because for some of us, we haven't done everything we could do about our situation. And that means that, that we, uh, we procrastinated or we, were, um, or, or we were lazy. We didn't do everything that we could do, and then... When we didn't do what we were supposed to do, then we started blaming God. All right? We started saying, okay, I, well, I should have done this, but I didn't do it, so it's, it's God's fault. See, that, that means worry is the lazy person's drug. That means you didn't do what you should have done first, so now the only thing you've got left is worry. And instead of worrying, you ought to get up and do something. Some of us today... No, there's some things we should have done. We can still do them, all right, rather than worry about them. And then, then the last one, uh, some of us are, are, not really to sure, are not really sure that God will take care of us or that he wants to take care of us. And so we, we like depending on ourselves. We, we like doing things our own way, depending on us and when that fails, there's nothing left to do except worry. See, I can't, I'm not God, so I can't take care of my own needs. And I can't help my family the way I need them to. So all I've got left is worry. When Jesus says, look at the flowers. They're not worried. And do they not, are they not awesome looking? Do they not have everything they need? Uh, he can. He will. He wants to take care of our needs. So Jesus comes back and he says, So, can you add an hour to your time by worrying? Well, if you can't, then why do it? 